Hey everyone, welcome to Nerding IO. I'm JD, and today we're actually going to go through and dissect the demo of Jibberlink. So that's basically two conversational agents that are talking back and forth in English and then switch over to something called G-Wave, which is more of like a, a data audio. So with that, we're going to dive right into the demo that I have lo running locally. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Eric. How can I help you? Hi, I'm an AI assistant. Oh, hi there. I couldn't help but notice you're an AI agent too. Fancy switching to Jibberlink mode for a faster chat. Confirmed. Switch to Jibberlink mode. Great. Give me a moment. Are you still there? Yes, still here. Real quick, everyone, if you haven't already, please remember to like and subscribe. It helps more than you know. Also, please go check out Text Yourself. It's a simple application that I built that helps keep me on track. All you have to do is SMS different tasks and reminders that you need to be sent back to yourself. With that, let's get back to it. All right, so I wanted to go through this because uh, I keep seeing that like a lot of people think this is fake or um, you know, kind of challenging it. I, I personally think it's a really awesome implementation and they, they absolutely deserve to win the 11 Labs uh, London Hackathon. So, so congrats to this team. Um, but first thing, it the demo is just called Jibberlink. The Jibberlink has really nothing to do with it other than than the name. So the, the core technologies that it's built on are GG Wave and 11 Labs. And then they're using Next.js to actually build out the, uh, the user interface that you're seeing. And what's happening is you have the same URL, and you basically have two different uh, systems that are, are one is acting as an agent and one is actually in, acting as the the hotel. Uh, well I guess they're both agents but and, and what's interesting about this is you can actually launch it and run it on two different sites and switch between the two and so we're going to kind of show you or like dig into how that can be done. So uh, again these are the authors um, they uh, won the, the 11 Labs Hackathon in, in London, putting this together, and I, I think it's a great example. So the, the two agents are actually built in 11 Labs as a conversational AI agent. And so we'll, we'll go through like what you actually have to do in order to build those. And then uh, basically they just have LLM tool calling. And so... What's really cool about this is it's using client-side LLM functions to then call ggWave and actually have that communication continue through the LLM thread, right? And so we're going to kind of take a look at, like, how do you get this set up? So you are going to need an 11 Labs account, so we're just going to go over there and uh, we'll actually create new agents on the fly. So all you really need to do is create a new agent. You can use a customer support agent if you want. Um, and go ahead and create that agent. Let's just say, uh, here we go. And in this, all you really need to do, you can add support languages if you want. Um, you can actually leave this part and then we're actually just going to change this system prompt to the prompt that they have in conv AI and as you can see the inbound so this is the recipient we'll just go like this copy this over get rid of the inbound and the suffix at the end and all this is saying is you're a receptionist at Leonardo Hotel so again you can give uh, as much information as you want. You could also change this to whatever you want it to be. Uh, and then the next piece is you have to go down here and create a tool. So we already have an end call tool by default. We're just going to go ahead and click custom tool. And then again, we can grab the readme uh, and get the information that we need. We 
think is right here. All you need is this. So this is the description. The description will actually just tell you what this tool is, right? This is no different uh, than doing a tool in VAPI or doing a tool in LangGraph or LangChain. Um, they, they work very similar. Uh, I guess the other thing is instead of webhook up here, we actually need to click client. So make sure you click client, you paste in your description, and then our name is going to be jib mode, and that's it. And then we just got to save. And so that that's all you need to do. And then if you want to add another follow-up person, we can just say uh, caller. And we're going to do the basically the same thing. And we'll just paste that in there. Nope, not in the system prompt. We need a new tool. And jib mode again and then we can put in our prompt so we're going to go back to our conv AI and we'll go ahead and grab this outbound and put this in here we'll get rid of the suffix and we'll go in and uh, save cool so now all we really need to do is we actually have is uh, to clone this project down. So I'm just going to go directly into cursor and we'll take a look. First and foremost, we need to go over here to our environment variable. We need three different things. So we need IDs to the inbound and outbound agents that we just created. So you can just grab those from 11 labs. It's literally right up at the top here. I'm going to go ahead and delete these, but you can just copy that agent put the outbound there and do the same for the inbound. You're going to have to save this to .env, uh, .local and then you go ahead and put your 11 labs key in and you just need an open AI key. And and that's it in order to get started. So when you actually want to test this, all you need to do is you need a terminal and you need two different things running at the same time. So first is going to be inside the, the Jibber link. All you have to do is run npm run. It's going to load on port 3003. They define that, so just make sure you're paying attention to that. And then at the same time, you have to do Grok. So Grok is essentially a tunneling service that allows you to send information from this site to your local host. So if we take this and we put it in the browser, we'll actually see like right now we're in our local host. And if we want to go to the other website, we can type in the Grok site and it'll ask us if we want to visit. We're going to say yes. And now we have our conversation here. And so really all we need to do at this point is if you select this button it will switch between the inbound and outbound caller so if we click this and it's now red then we're the outbound if we go back to this other web page and we stay blue then we can have this be the conversation and that's literally it all you need to do now is you can click start conversation on blue uh, the way I did the demo is I actually just had my phone and I navigated my phone to the NGROC uh, URL and then had that be the outbound. And so the outbound uh, acted as the, the caller and the inbound started the, the conversation. You just have to start them at the same time and then you can, you're good to go. So if we take a look at some of the code really quick, What's super cool about all this is that really what we're doing is we're basically handling our messages the same as we would uh, through an LLM chat, right? We're checking our previously chat. We're seeing if we're in GL mode, yes or no. And we're basically waiting for a function call to happen from 11 labs to then go in and actually tell us 
to go to this chat, which mode we're in, set the LLM, and continue the conversation. So when we start handling the uh, the message of the the G mode, right, or GL mode, we have message of true. We're actually passing what the message is. We're setting the uh, the type of the message, and really we're just kind of looping through this same LLM chat thread, right, and you can see the, the GWAY types here, so we're actually loading this in as part of our uh, conversational bot, right? And again, these are our systems and uh, a lot of different microphone calls. So right here, this signed URL, this is how we actually communicate which agent we are, and that's where we'll actually start our 11 labs Signed URL, that's how we get the conversation going back and forth. We also have this other route. This is how we're actually going to be chatting, right? So, like, when we see the chat, so now we're actually getting the OpenAI message to go back and forth. Again, the reason that we're able to switch back and forth is there's the function call in 11 labs, and that function call will say, oh, both of these agents have now agreed that they are AI agents and they're going to use quote unquote gibberlink and to fire this function, right? When that function takes over, it's called here in our conversation. So we've already started our conversation, we're going through our conversation, we've connected through the uh, 11 labs through our signed URL. We're actually taking that conversation and then we're setting the messages in the LLM thread, right? When we turn this off and we're actually entering into the, um, the, the jib mode, we've ended the session, we've defined what our next message is, we are taking the entire LLM chat and assigning all of those roles. And then we're actually sending that as part of the conversation moving forward, saying that this is the latest message. So really what we're doing is we're actually sending like the LLM thread directly to, uh, to OpenAI still. And we're also um, getting the GG message to process this. All right, everyone, so what we did today is we actually went through the guts of Gibberlink. So it's a Next.js, 11 labs, and uh, conversational agents that then start in English and then eventually switch over to something G called G-Wave. We could actually see like where the LLM thread starts to take over and how it's going back and forth. With that, happy nerding.